Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thou creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Call Halal La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's Hebrew, interpret, bless Yahweh, bless Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father, Yahweh, in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hope for elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, uh, back at you again with another lesson. This lesson is going to be entitled, While the Evil Days Come Not. While the evil days come not. All right. And um, this is a lesson based on prophecy. All right. We're living in, you know, crucial times and also exciting times, you know, because we're at the end of the world. All right. And people in the world, they get it misscrewed when you say the end of the world. They think the whole world is going to end. But in fact, when we say this is the end of the world, we're saying, as the Bible says, this is the end of Esau. All right. And um, let me get a quick scripture real quick. Just to prove that. Second Edges chapter uh, 6, verse 6. It says, Then did I consider these things, and they were all made through me alone. And through none other, by me also they shall be ended. And by none other. And that's the most high speaking. Verse 7. Then answered I, which is Edris, and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. And if you know the if you know the uh, story of Jacob and Esau, then you should know this characteristic or this prophecy. All right. Because when Jacob was born and Esau was born, Esau came out first, but Jacob held upon his hill. And that was symbolic that Jacob was going to take Esau out of power. So I'm going to read again. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac and Jacob. And when Jacob and Esau were born of him. Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right, and we know who Esau is today. Esau is the so-called Europeans, all right, so-called white man, white woman. You, biblically, are Esau Edom. You are the Edomites that the Bible speaks of. And we know that through faith. We also know that through, you know, characteristics, all right? We know that through uh, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So getting back, uh, let me get my scripture back, which I had. Uh, excuse me. All right. Let me get this back in Romans. But before I read Romans. I'm going to continue in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. It says, Remember now thou creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. The doors, the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and at the, all the daughter's music shall be brought low. And this is the time we're living in because clearly, you know, when they declare martial law, when they declare World War III, when they force the RFID microchip, hey, 
the doors of the streets are going to be shut. All right. And, and we're in that season. We're approaching those times. You know, these other nations are still practicing and doing drills. All right. You know, it's, it's even still uh, bickerings of wars going on. All right. Little short battles between certain uh, certain lands. All right. Especially in the Eastern world. And we also know that Esau, the so-called white man, starting with the elites, which are the Rothschilds. All right. And all the international bankers, which is the house of Esau. They have an agenda and their agenda is to microchip everyone. You see in different parts of the land, you know, which is Sweden, East India, all right, um, China, all of these uh, lands, you know, the government that rule upon these lands, they are now biometrics. They are now um, transhumans, all right? Not everyone, but the majority of everyone, all right? And it's going to be a law. Where you're going to have to take the RFID microchip, which we understand to be what? The mark of the beast. So we're living in some exciting times and also some evil times. All right. Because it's exciting to the Lord's elect so long that they look for. You know, the prophets always look for the day that Yahweh Shai return. You know, and now we're approaching a time when the wicked is going to be judged. You know, the wicked right now, just like the scriptures say. Um, you know, they said, uh, they said good for evil, evil for good, you know, folly is set in great dignity, you know, it's set on high, you know, everything that's, uh, wicked, abominable is put on a pinnacle, it's put on a throne, you know, and righteousness is really, you know, on the bottom, but the Lord has shifted, okay, righteousness and evil. Because Esau is evil, you know, he's, he's the chul, that, that mean, impolite, uh, mean-spirited person, okay, that wicked creature, okay, that the Most High created. He is the sons of the wicked, and we're living in these times, so, you know, if you, you know, I had a conversation, you know, all I could say is you better get the truth. I ain't gonna go into depth with the conversation, but... My 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 um my answer was you better get the truth before it's too late and that's what drew it to this lesson, you know because soon you know it, you're not going to be able to watch videos and yeah I have Apostle Tahar, the camp, um, his previous camp they had, and you know he's out there teaching, you know because these are the real prophets. These are the men. That the Heavenly Father have set up to teach his word, his gospel, his doctrine with 100% truth. Despite other people's feelings and differences. But if you're not speaking according to the spirit and truth of the word, then you're not in the truth. You don't have the truth. All right. So I'm going to continue on. It says, um, the doors shall be shut in the streets, meaning there's going to be no work. All right. When the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at a voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fears shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because men goeth to his long home. And the mourners go about the streets. All right. And I'm, I'm going to end it there. And I'm going to jump to um, Romans chapter 13. And I start here at uh, verse 10. It says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And us brothers of the whole four elect, you know, I'm going to say here, great millstone. We truly have the love of the Lord. All right. Because. We hold the commandments to the best of our ability, you know, meaning we're not perfect, but we rehearse and strive to be perfect. You know, scriptures say, you know, even though our, our works, he said, counted as what? Filthy rags, because there's a thing about enduring, you know, all the way to the end. And, and the most important thing to have is a couple of things, fear in the Lord and faith, hope, 
you know, and endurance. Those are the key things that we need, and you need that by the word. All right? It says uh, in the gift, which is of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, it says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. See, you should know the time that you're living in, you know, instead of just looking at the time clock and seeing what time, what time it is of the day, you need to know what time of the season and what spirits is going to be here on the earth, man. You know, that's why I read the scripture, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, because you suppose the acts of the old past, man. You know, you suppose the acts of the truth, but instead the Lord have blinded the two thirds and that's all for a good reason, man. Okay, so that what? They can't get the truth. They can't be healed because of the sins that they did in their past. All right, they're not the elect. And um, we truly here at Great Millstone, we push for the elect because that's what it boils down to. You know, it's, it's a thing of you knowing, you know, what this is about. But if you're not living it, all right, then you're just good as dead, man. All right. It's the one thing about knowing you're an Israelite. And it's another thing about following the ways of being an Israelite, which the Lord set up for us, you know, which in one, at one point in time. All right. We did walk in the ways of the Lord. We kept the commandments, but then the Lord took it away. And now that we're here on the what? Western side of the world and also it, the elect is scattered throughout the world, but mainly here in Babylon, which is known as America. Our people. All right. You got to come back to the most high. And I'm talking about all the elect around the world, man. All right, so let me get back. Um, this is in that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. All right, so we believe that, you know, maybe by the end of this year or whenever, you know, you could say um, you believe you know, the end of this year is when the Lord, you know, possibly have these devils forced to chip or whatever the case may be. Just know that the Lord said is nearer than when we believe. And yes, prophecy has to take place first. All right. But it's a thing that we're not going to know the set day, the set time, the set hour, nor the second. Because Yahweh Shai said he comes as a thief. All right. So, you know, if you going about this thing you better get it while you can all right you better get it while you can and um i played the possible video also i had lined up uh right here the other elders all right well the apostles i may say elder apostles this is apostle of the bars page all right where you can get the work this is uh elder apostle raka all right where you can get the work this is elder apostle of uh, rumla where you can get the work, all right? And you have the uh, elder brother, Manatazak, all right? Where you can get the work, GMS on air, all right? Elder Ayatun, and you have Elder Tazaiwan. These and it's and it's many more of the uh, the uh, elders and apostles. Well, let me say the elders, all right, and brothers who you can get the shows from, you know. But I just chose these, you know, as a um, you know, as a, as, a, as a foundation, all right, and um, and in order, all right. So let me get back. This is Romans chapter thirteen and eleven, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So this this salvation of ours is so near that you know every other day, you know, if you're in the spirit, you know that Jake is gone. There's no help in them. You see the this, this circumcision. Those that know that they're Israelites. Those that's out there saying and pushing that they're Israelites. But you see the false prophets that they are. You know? The majority of them. There's an elect, there's an elect amongst them. Alright? But guess what? Majority of these guys that set themselves up to be these type of uh, uh, mighty men. They're not. Because of look at their works. So... You see Esau being a devil that he is, which is devil means deceiver, liar, all right? You see any other nations prepping and preparing for World War III, all right? So it's so much going on, man. 
You know, you know that inside that the Lord has to do something. You know, so you better get this truth while you can. This is verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. All right. So if you don't cast off the works of darkness, then that's your ass. All right. Because Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai is coming to judge. He's not coming back to lay his life down again for his people. Because the world think he laid his life down for everybody. But he didn't. He laid his life down, in particular, the elect of his people. Because through the elect, guess what? The rest of his people will be good. You know, by by hit the blood of his sacrifice. And first for the sacrifice of his sins, which when he was Solomon, you know, he that got ears to hear, let him hear. All right. Let me read that again. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now, what that mean is you got to repent. You got to truly turn from your wicked ways, man. You got to truly turn from your wicked ways. You know, trying to prove yourself before men. And then when you on your, you know, your, your lone, your ISO time, but it's just you. And the Lord knows, sees what you're doing. And you're not being a man of the Lord. The Lord knows these things, man. It's all about casting off the works of darkness, man. Putting on that what? Arm of light, which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is the word. And like I said, I must stress again, we're not perfect, but it's a thing about actually what's the thing about true repentance, which is by the word. You gotta live your, you gotta live as a as a man of the Lord. You gotta live as a, a woman of the Lord. Alright, because there are women out there that are of the elect. Those that are humble, quiet, and doing the will of the most high. May the most high have mercy on them or on those women. May the Most High guide those women to their rightful men. All right? Because there are elect women out there, I must say. So it says, um, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the, work of dark, the works of darkness and let us put on the arm of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Why? Why you want to walk honestly? Because you, you have to be sincere in this truth. Because in the day, when you're walking outside in the daytime, you know, that's when people have their Clark Kent on. You know, they they they, they miss the goody two-shoe. You know, they so perfect. They so right. But at nighttime, they're true demons because they figure nobody is watching. Well, guess what? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is always watching, man. You got to put off the, the, abominate, the abominable foods, man. Crab, shrimp, lobster, pork. You got to get out of those churches, all right, and being taught that Christianity, plantation slavery doctrine. At one point, it did do something for us. It kept us in the spirit and believing in the Most High. You know, our people, especially Judah, which going to the Hebrew word Yahweh, means Yahweh praise. Uh, Jake, the so-called Negroes, they always pray. Well, the women, you know, and men, they always praising the Most High. All right. And you are the top tribe of the Israelites. You know, Yahweh Shai was the tribe of Judah, you know, but you got to come out of those wicked ways. You got to truly come out. You got to you got to denounce that. And yes, the scriptures say, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And guess what? You're going to be tempted by Satan. You know what? Let me look up the word temptation real quick again. Temptation, meaning. Temptation, the desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. So the Lord said, my son, prepare thy soul for temptation because Satan is going to tempt you. Tempt you to do what? The desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. You know, you committing adultery. You having threesomes. You smoking weed. You know, um, you uh, uh, picking up some vain philosophy. You know, whatever what it is. It's something unwise, all right, and it's something wrong. The Lord told us he wants us to be blameless and unspotted. And the only way we can be blameless and unspotted, unless he deems us to be blameless and unspotted. But that's why the scriptures say, um, uh, give, give, thus, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You know, do all that you can. And you're supposed to be in that type of spirit. 
You have to be in order to get out of the world. That's the first step. You got to be willing not to be ashamed of the of the of the Lord. You got to be willing to dismiss the bullshit and you know not feel bad because others are mock you, man. Like your family members, you know, or whoever your woman leave you or whatever. They say you crazy. They say you crazy, man, because leaving the world is hard. But there's nothing impossible to your how about me? I was shy. He said, if ye shall call, if ye shall knock, he will answer, man. But you got to be sincerely ready and sincerely willing, you know, with a willing spirit. All right. And this lesson is just for the elect out there. I had a conversation, like I said, and it uh, went into that. And my answer was, you better get this truth before it's too late. You know, matter of fact, let me get a quick scripture real quick and I'll come back. Get a quick precept, which is um, in the Apocrypha Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach. Uh, I think it's five and one. It says, "Set, set thou heart upon, set thou heart upon thou goods, and say not, I have enough for my life." All right. So you're not supposed to set your mind upon your goods and say you got enough, because if you got enough, that means you don't need to be healed. You don't need your help, Bashim Yahushai. That means you received your constellation on this side. We don't want a constellation on this side. We would rather have our lot. With Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, then receive reward on this side. Because our reward comes when Yahweh Shai come, and that's everlasting life. It says, verse 2 Follow not thy own mind and thou strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. You gotta follow not your own mind. Your own mind to tell you, Nah, I don't like the way he said that. Nah, I don't like how he cursed. He used, nah, you hear it is, you hear a brother in the spirit say a rude word. And you missing the message because you so caught up in your emotions. You know, you're not really getting the understanding. You know, following your own mind is, you know what, I get I get back to the truth later. I got to make this money. The scriptures say, follow not thy own mind and thou strength. Because you might got strength. You might got power. You know, you might got some money. Money is a form of power. You can have whatever you want, whatever you desire. You know, you can make, you can persuade people in that way. You know, it says to walk in the ways of thy heart. Heart represents mind. It's not talking about the muscle. Verse three, and say not who shall control me for my works. That's a prideful creature. All right. That goes for a man and a woman. All right. And say not who shall control me for my works. That's, that's pride. You know, saying that. You know, whatever you, you know, you could do whatever you want to do. You let the wicked say those, say those things. All right. You let the wicked believe that they're not going to receive judgment, but they are. And um, I'm going to get a preset real quick off of that. Um, This is uh, Amos chapter nine. Chapter nine. Verse. Uh, verse 10, I get straight to the point. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. That's pride. All right. Someone is saying, oh, go, oh, you know, especially in the Christianity world. All right. Those that's taught in that, that uh, Esau's doctrine, you know, of Jesus Christ, which the Lord's name is not Jesus Christ. They're taught to believe that, you know, Jesus died for their sins. And now they can eat pork. They can do whatever they like. Why would a man, a great man, I'll say, sent from the heavenly father, the creator, down here to die for you to do whatever you want? Think about that. It doesn't make sense. All right. You should question the doctrine and, and what you believe in. And seek truth. If you If you are a seeker of truth. Then you're going to find it if the Lord allow you to. Let me say that because the most high can block you. All right. But if you are a seeker of truth, you will understand what's true and what's not true. You got to cut out the emotions, man. It says all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. So they believe that they're not going to be destroyed because they are not committing sin against the most high. Well, we shall see. Because we see, we vexed every day. I'm vexed. I speak for myself. 
I'm vexed every day. I understand when Lot was vexed in Sodom because I'm very vexed being here where I'm at every day. I can, I could, I got to catch myself when I'm in the car driving. I see shit. I start cursing shit out. Get so mad, man. Then I start thinking, you know, when the Lord going to come, you know, you get angry with this. You got to calm down. You got to, you got to calm down, you know, because this thing is about a, it's patience, you know, but it vexes you, man. Everything, man. Everything. All right. Um. This Ecclesiastes back in uh, the, the Apocrypha, the Bible, of course, Ecclesiastes chapter five and two. Follow not thy own mind and thou strength to walk in the ways of thy heart and say not who shall control me for my works. For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. And the Lord is all about kicking pride's ass. Whoever has pride, he's going to challenge you. Whoever has pride, he's going to challenge you. That's why, you know, pride goes before a haughty fall. Pride leads to destruction. You know, leaning upon your own understanding will lead, will lead you, will, will lead you to your demise. That's why the Lord said, be humble, humble as a little child. Why humble as a little child? So that you can receive the information. When you old, you're like an old wine bottle. You can't, the scriptures say you can't put new wine in old bottles. Because that man is full of pride. You know? But a child, he can receive the instructions. He can understand eventually when he gained the experience. When he's being disciplined in the word. Alright? Verse 4. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm have happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. So the Lord ain't going to let the wicked go unpunished. Esau. Shit the hell. Esau. You're not going unpunished. You're not going unpunished. Yeah, it's been some years, man. But guess what? The Lord still has your clock. And he said in Job, there's a boundary that you can't pass. There's a time clock ticking. And we're at the very last minute of Esau's rulership, man. Because he's going to be judged. And the world is going to truly, truly understand the power that governs this earth, man. And you're going to respect it. You're going to have to fear. You're going to respect his people who he set up over you. Because the world is full of pride. Esau is full of pride. These niggas out here. Yeah. These women out here full of pride, man. And that's all of Esau's work. All right. It says, um. The Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. The Lord is long suffering, man. Matter of fact, let me look that word up. Long suffering. Long suffering meaning. Okay. It says having or showing patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. So the Lord is very, very patient and not reacting, you know, to your wickedness so fast, to your troubles. The Lord is very patient. That's why he is the revenger. He said, revenge belongeth unto him. And this is why we truly cry out to the Lord. Of everything we going through, you better, you, you damn right. We telling on you. We telling the Lord, man. Yep. We telling. And we hope the Most High do something to you, man. All right. And if you're an Israelite, at least you repent. But if you Esau, may you go into uh, uh, slavery, captivity. He that lived by the sword must be, uh, uh, let me get that. So like, yeah, let me get that real quick. I don't want to butcher it. Revelations 13, what is it? 9 and 13. Revelations chapter 9. What is it? 13 and 9. Uh, yeah. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And they go that key word again. Patience. It's all about patience. That's another key word to focus in on. Patience. And our apostles taught us, all right, that when you get into the word patience, 
It also means to what? Suffer. All right. So let me get back. Let me read uh, long suffering one more time. Having or showing patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. And I know the Lord is fairy with, with the ways that's going on now. This is all Sodom and Gomorrah once again. That's why the Lord said this place, Babylon, all right, is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. The Lord is looking at Sodom all over again after he destroyed it without warning. So I know the Lord is fury, man. But what? The Lord is very patient because when he when he hit his target, <laughs> it's perfect, man. It's perfect. So let me get back to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Also known as Sirach chapter 5 and um, verse 5. Concerning propetition, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. You know, you don't want to be without fear of the Lord to just willingly sin. You crazy. Verse 6. And say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitudes of my, of my sins. For mercy and wrath... Come from him and his indignation resteth upon sinners. All right, here's the point. Verse seven, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in a day of vengeance. <laughs> Lord is bad, man. Lord is bad. All right, so... Let's get back to uh, my original scripture and I'll wrap this thing up. This is Romans 13 and 11. And it says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake up out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we would believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. That's a cut on the scoffers. You got scoffers out there, man. Paid agents like Vocab Malone and his minions. All right. Scoffers. The Most High didn't make his word for scoffers to scoff. How can you believe that you're doing the works of the Most High when Yahweh Shai, his son, his only begotten son, all right, Never scoffed. You're supposed to go out there on the street, as the scriptures say, and teach the word. It says, um, verse 14, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. All right. So I hope this lesson was edifying. It's very basic. You know, this was a continuation, continuing the conversation. You know, you better get this truth first, man. You know, as I showed you before, this is El Paso Tahar from out in New York. All right. You see the title. Apostle is a great millstone. You know, this is, uh, I believe this is probably a Sunday camp. They went back out, I believe. Not sure. But I, I heard they, they did, you know, because, of course, Holy Day just passed the Day of Atonement. All right. And this is the Apostle's page. This is another Apostle. Kabar, this is Apostle Sahar, Apostle Kabar, Apostle, uh, Apostle Raka, all right, GMS Push On, Apostle Rumlob, you got Elder Manantazak, uh, Elder Ayatun, and Elder Tazaiwan, all right, and it's, and it's, it's plenty of more elders, of course, but um, through the spirit, you know, I just put, grab these up real quick, just to do the show, and to lead the elect, into the right way follow great millstone all right you know and that's you know that's on you a hey, elder apostle tahar said that stuck with me you can dance with satan but if you get bit that's on you all right so you can watch all these different camps and learn all the scriptures you want but if you ain't got the hundred percent truth and you ain't walking in it you know you calling upon a false name then that's on you because the men of the lord is out doing the work bedtimes you know, and there's no cloak, meaning there's no excuse, all right, that you couldn't get this truth. Because really, if you couldn't get it, it's because the Lord blinded you. And really, you was a wicked man and with pride. 
So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Even a woman, you're a wicked woman with pride. Right? So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Bahashim Rakakodash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.